Today I'm going to show you the most effective basketball practice drill. When it comes to practicing, I'm often asked by players which drill should they practice to earn the minutes they desire in games. So I'm going to show you the best drills to work on to hone the top three offensive skills, which are to me ball handling, finish, and shooting. I'm Coach Charlie with Tech Basketball Academy. As Marine Basketball Player Development Coach, I have trained thousands of players around the world on the techniques and tactics needed to be dominant offensive players. So in this video today, I'm going to show you the four must-know ball handling drills. Next, I'm going to show you two finishing drills to increase your chances of scoring. Last, I'm going to show you three drills to get your shooting like Steph Curry. And on top of that, I have a bonus that I'll give to you, but only if you stick around to the very end. Let's get right into the four must-know ball handling skills. First, you need to understand that this basketball needs to become an extension of your hand, almost like you're playing with, with a yo-yo, right? The ball needs to be an extension of your hand. Second. Everything on your hand touches the ball except your palms. There's no control here. So first starting off to me with what we call Maverick drills, right? Pete Maravich drills, I should say, right? Getting your hands warm to some using ball squeezes. You might hear that ripping sound on my mic, right? You want to strengthen your finger pad and fingertips. That's the key to me. So just doing simple ball squeezes, right? Ball tosses back and forth between your finger pad and fingertips. My hands molded on the ball, right? My palms not touching it. Doing, su doing super simple, I should say doing simple, right, body wraps, staying still when I do these things, not swaying, right, making sure my legs are loaded, my eyes are up, court vision I'm building, okay, then doing a figure eight, again, learning how to handle the basketball. What I don't want to do is smack the ball. I want to have my finger pad, finger pad and fingertips working, okay? Then you want to start to learn how to do what? Smash the basketball because the key to get my hands warmed up in order now is the stationary pound dribble. The hard pound dribble is what I tell people and tell players to say, you need to master. Because when you smash the ball hard to the floor, it comes back to your hands quickly. And the quicker the ball comes into your hands, the quicker you can make plays for, for teammates, right? Or yourself. So learning how to smash the basketball. Going right into it. A hard pound dribble, what I call a low dribble. This ball does not come up above my, my ankle area. So this is low. Speed is at my knees. This is where I want to drill the basketball against a defender. At my knees and thighs. Open court waist. No one's guarding me. So just kind of showing you turn. The ball's coming upright. My stance is upright. Open court. Sideline's not a barrier. And then exaggeration. Because if I can handle this basketball over my head, then anything below it I can handle as well. So what I do on the right side, I want to do on the left side. Low. I have an on ball up, active hand that can help me protect the ball against reaching defenders. Ball dribble low. This is medium. This drill is called dribble heights. Change the dribble heights. This is high. Ball at the waist as I smash it. Drop my elbow through the ball. Right? And this is exaggeration. Okay? Getting your hands warmed up first, then pounding the basketball, then learning how to now do what? Change speeds. This is called pound kills. I have three upright dribbles. I drop my hips and lower my legs, and I do a speed dribble. And I'm acting as if I'm changing speeds, staying stationary. Right? I can throw a fake in, change hands. Right? Working on a pound kill. I drop my hips, and I dribble the basketball vigorously. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Last one. One, two, three, three, two, one. And what I'm doing when I drop my hips, I'm trying to get three seconds, as many dribbles as I can get in, to really work on when I'm changing speeds, I need to speed up and go by my guy, right? Next stationary, I'll do change of directions. To keep it simple, after working on change of speed, the progression now is change directions. So now what I want to do, I call, I call it an hourglass, right? What I'm doing is just build the momentum up, with the crossover, then between the legs and behind the back. And I'll try to go quicker and quicker and quicker, right? Make mistakes all good. Don't chase them, replace them. I close my eyes to get a feel for it, too. Five, four, three, two, one. Right? Those are really good, solid drills to do stationary. Now, for show purposes, an example, think about now doing those things on the move, right? You might do a speed dribble from, say, half court and back. You might go with a change of speed dribble, uh, half court and back. You're not also going to a change of direction. So 
to me, those are surefire ways to guarantee that you're going to build up strong ball handles when it comes to becoming a tight ball handler. Before I show you the two finishing drills to increase your chance of scoring, I noticed that you're not a subscriber. I develop premier basketball players and roll out 20 high quality videos every month to help you. So click that subscribe button. Now let me show you two finishing drills to increase your chance of scoring. So let's talk about footwork. There's two ways you typically can finish at the rim. It's a one foot speed finish, getting to the basket as high as you can, right? And there's a two foot power finish where you need to hop, right? And the reason why you need to probably shoot a two foot finish is because someone's catching up and you don't want to lose your balance control. You want to learn how to finish throughout the contact, finish despite the contact, and you can shoot the ball higher. Let's talk about hand accountability, right? Hand accountability, right? Well, out of many ways I can shoot the basketball, I've identified three to keep it simple for players. All right, now let's talk about three hand accountability. So you have an overhand. I go with a speed finish, one foot finish. I want to get to the basket as soon as possible. That's overhand. I have an underhand. I may have to do what we call a long layup. Someone's trying to catch up from behind. I may need to make a long layup approach. I can also do the same thing with a two foot finish, right? Underhand. And then last is a wide hand. A wide hand could be considered like a hook shot, right? Or a wide hand could be like a reverse layup, right? That's a wide hand. I got my arms out, right? So learning how to play with your finishes around the rim, really, like learn how to finish, like Kyrie Irving. Notice I'm mixing up my finishes, right? I'm also going right hand, left hand, being playful, being elusive. But this is how you get better, right? That's how you get better, right? So one foot finishes, speed finishes, get to the bass as soon as possible, get to the air, right? No one's on you. Think about a fast break. You don't want to miss a layup. Get to the basket, use the glass. Two foot, someone's catching up. Finish more balance under control. Get more composed. Shoot the ball higher. Get more touch. Hand accountability. Overhand, underhand, wide hand. Wide hand is also like a what? Reverse. Now that you know how to work on your ball handling finishing, I want you to comment below with your favorite drill that we've showed you thus far and click the thumbs up to let us know you like this video. Now I'm going to show you three drills to get your shooting like Steph Curry. See, the goal of shooting is to consistently shoot the basketball in straight lines. So with that being said, the method of teaching that we teach on shooting when it comes to shooting for or to attack basketball is called tuck, set, go, where you learn to use a line, I should say, your shot side of your body. If you're right-handed, your right foot goes to the middle of the basket wherever you're located, okay? So your shot side is your right foot, your right knee, hip, and shoulder. That's what you want to align to the basket, right? The basketball on your shot side wants to go up that line. That's the key. And that's how you shoot the basketball repeatedly in straight lines. And if you follow your body like a cheat code and stay still, right, at your release point to the ball over, the ball goes in a straight line. And while we cannot control the make every time, we can learn to control the take, and that's the key. Okay, doing it right hand and left hand to show you, right? Not showing off, but just show you. Line your body up, shot side, left side, left foot, left knee, left hip, left shoulder, ball's laid on the shot side, tuck, set, go, release the basketball, and hold my follow through, that's the key. Because you want to learn how to shoot the basketball with flow and touch. Flow gives you one fluid motion. Touch, you learn how to hold your follow through. Right? That, that's what gives you confidence. As I go back and forth learning this method. Tuck, set, go. Okay? Great miss. Make it up. Mentality, never chase a miss. Replace it. That simple. Right? So just showing you shooting the basketball six feet out. Okay, tuck, set, go. Holding my follow through. Got a lot of composure. Getting shots done, form shooting, right? Showing you, holding my follow through, form shooting. Now I'm show you how to get on the move with your shot, right? From tuck, set, go. Once you shoot form shots, learn how to turn until your shot, releasing the basketball, okay? Shooting, you know, no more than 10 foot shots. Really gaining composure, confidence, okay? Then you want to go to a game spot and learn to shoot a game shot. Right now, I'll go through that same motion on catch and shoot shots. Want to shoot it from set at a game shot, which is around the shoulder area. 
hold my follow through. Last, you want to learn how to put the ball on the ground for a dual pull up, right? And the way you shoot your pull ups is the same way you want to shoot your regular jump shots, which is your catch and shoot shots from tuck set go, right? Here's a pull up from the set area, a higher area, and lastly, here's a pull up from the tuck area. Ball kind of came around my waist area. Let's keep the momentum going with that bonus I mentioned earlier. We've covered a lot in this video, and I want to really make sure I'm helping you out. So I would like to offer you a free guide that covers all the muscle basketball principles and in what switch to apply them. This is a powerful guide of best practice tips and skills empowering to take charge of your game. Just click the link in the description below, and you can download the guide I put together as my gift to you. And if you want to get serious about improving your ball handling, finish, and shooting skills, make sure you check out our other courses that can be found at the same link. Enjoy your gift, and keep attacking.